Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the main attraction of everybody's week. This is episode 84 of the Wash of Walk-Ons podcast, and we're back with uh, another insane guest. Um, pretty much been a guy that it's hard, to, it's hard to call anybody a guarantee, but this is the closest I've ever seen to a guarantee from his inception of his Iowa football career. Lock uh, it in. I this is going to be a story we get into, but I offered this young, this young animal a lump sum of money about the first day he walked in the door because I knew just how much that equity in his future endeavors was going to be worth. He turned it down because he was already smarter than me at that point. One of the most decorated Hawks ever, one of our good friends, lives in the house that uh, the Benton Savages used to occupy. He's just another one in line of the savages, man. Uh, Tristan, it's great to have you on. Welcome, bud. What up, T Daddy? Oh, nothing much, boys. How is? For, we're gonna get into the life of Tristan Wirfs because I'm sure it's uh, it's a, been a hell of a ride, especially the last year. How is life on Benton right now? I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. Living on Benton Street. Um, it was crazy. This morning, there was like 10 cop cars out in front of our house pulled in our driveway, <clears throat> pulled in the neighbor's driveway. Um, <laughs> that sounds like another day on Benton Street. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you're right. But they were doing something at the neighbor's house. They're kind of they're kind of sketchy. But um, Is it still the same neighbors that are extremely broke and uh, – Smoke every like, day. And living in the mud pile on their patio? It's not the same ones, but they meet that exact criteria. <laughs> So just backstory for those listening, the neighbors that we had for our four years, I think they were there all four years, um, even before you were there, Drake, um, a family that has an unknown amount of members in it. You would find mm -hmm. new people at the house every other week. Uh, people would come in and out and none of them would meet the FDA uh, criteria for cleanliness. No, uh, it was, it was quite a situation. The kids ran around rarely with pants on and uh spent a lot of time in the mud just played in the mud mm -hmm. a lot tristan Wirfs, everybody tristan where do we start man mount vernon iowa yes sir tell us about mount um, vernon what's the best part the of dirty mount vern let's 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 the talk dirty about vern. <laughs> the best part of mount vernon um i would have to say that i'd say the people i mean you know, growing up there is like, um, you know, the community was so, <clears throat> was so helpful, um, you know, in, in, in kind of wel welcoming me with open art. You know, I grew up there, you know, my whole life, but, um, you know, coming from a, a single parent household, you know, there are a lot, a lot of people stepped, you know, stepped in um, and kind of gave me that, that like that father figure and, and kind of guidance that I, that I needed at that young age. Um, but the town itself, you know, it's a, a great they got a, a movie theater it's called the bijou um i think from probably from like fourth grade to freshman year i spent every saturday there i've seen every movie known to man you're a movie <laughs> guy they, i'm a big movie guy big movie buff. what's your um, favorite movie <clears throat> favorite movie is probably um uh, probably remember the titans or uh you know the, the replacements with keanu reeves yeah 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 okay yeah You've got quite a story, Tristan. Do you ever do you ever sit back? There's been a lot of I mean, obviously for a lot of guys that go through Iowa, I mean, even the long snapper for me, uh, there was times where I would sit there a lot of the time in August when media day happens during camp before the season, and even I would sit back and be like, God, why are people writing stories about me? I know Drake probably had hometown stories written about him, and we were nobodies. I mean, we literally are the washed up walk-ons now. You are, some would say, not even to your prime, I would guess. And you've had a lot of stories written about you and just your story in general as a human being. I mean, you're what, 21 years old? As of Friday. As of Friday, yep. Yeah. As of Friday, you're 21. And you've, you've got quite this journey that you've gone on. Do you ever sit back and reflect? You know, for a long time, I, I, I didn't really, I kind of, I didn't really sit, you know, sit back and reflect on it. But then uh, Mark Morehouse uh, did that, that long, like, eight-piece story on me over the summer. And, um, you know, reading through that, 
than like, you know, seeing the words on paper and like kind of, kind of being able to just read your own story pretty much. Um, that was, that was pretty special, you know, um, cause you get so caught up in the moment with things, you know, you just keep, you know, you guys, you guys know what football is. Nothing's like, ever you good enough. Sick. You got to keep getting yeah, better. Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep getting better. Everything's such a routine. Like you, you, you get into such a, such a mode where, um, it's just go, go, go. And you, you can't, really have yeah, that you time can't to, breathe. So, you know, being able to read that and, and kind of realize how far I've come and, and how far, you know, I still have yet to go. Um, was pretty, was pretty cool. Even though you're only 21 and you just finished college and you haven't played a snap in the NFL yet, are you the most famous person from Mount Vernon ever? I don't, I don't think so. Who then? <laughs> there's uh there's Matt Kroll. Okay. He, he was an Iron okay. Hawk. Um, yep. Scott Postel, also an Iron Hawk. So Mount Vernon is, is the only school that has two Iron Hawks. And I won it this year. So we're the only school that has three Iron Hawks. Well, I want to let you know you're more famous than both those guys already. Um, <laughs> just because the age we live in, like it's Definitely just, it at least what right it is. now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's, that's a pretty good lineup. Muscatine High School does not have three Iron Hawks. Uh, we didn't even have one. I came up a little short. So you're, I mean, you were close. Yeah, I had Josie Jewell in the same class. So how was I ever yeah. going to Tough to compete yeah, with the outlaw. Yeah, the outlaw. The uh, – going back to that kind of that can't breathe, always striving to be better mentality, it's a thing at Iowa that obviously Doyle is at the forefront of. And I think it's a good thing. I think it's, a, I think it's why Iowa – I think it's why Iowa and the Hawks consistently – produce stories like you and even stories, you know, cause you're an athlete that, and we'll get into it in high school, people like Drake said in the intro, you know, you're kind of a, you're a freak athlete compared to a lot of normal humans, Tristan. Uh, let's just be honest. The, that mentality of just go, go, go the lifestyle of a division one football player. Was there ever a time in your three years where you were, where it, where it got to be too much. I'm interested because you're one of the stars of the team. You're one of the the big time players. Was it ever, was there ever a time where you got, I don't know, anxiety or you were so stressed and you had to, there was almost like a day where you sat back. Cause I, we had talked about it on this podcast before where there were multiple times where it's like, damn, I don't know if I can do this. Like this, this is tough. We're, talk about yeah. if you had any tough moments, I'm interested. I think my, I think my freshman year, Right before I started, I I started starting. It was before the Illinois game. My mom had called me and asked, like, like um, how I was feeling, you know, because I I had kind of been putting a lot of like um, like pressure on myself. Um, you know, there's a lot of emotion, you know, leading up to that. And um, <coughs> I the, the coach, you know, the coach was wrong me because I had to get ready. You know, I had to get ready to play. And um, as soon as she called me, you know, it was like it was like that Thursday, I think. As soon as she called me, I just started like kind of breaking down and crying because mm -hmm. I, I kind of expressing all that emotion of just um, that kind of go, go, go mentality, you know, and, but I just let it out. I just, you know, let it all out. And I think that, I think that was the only time, but kind of, kind of like on the same track, you know, as you get older, like you realize how, how much you need that structure and, and, you know, that daily routine and, you know, it's, it's, it's so important. Um, because like, I, like, I think personally, I, I do a lot better with, you know, with, with good structure and, and, you know, um, and just knowing I have to be places at certain times, I have to do this at certain times, you know? Um, so I think, you know, as you get older, you realize how important that is. For sure. So I got a question for you now. Um, so now thinking back on reflecting really when you were, when you're a high school kid and you were extremely successful in high school, multi-sport, you were just the man you were going to Iowa as an all American at a high school and, I'm sure you had all of these goals and aspirations that you set for yourself. Now, did you exceed and by how much have you exceeded the expectations that you set your, for yourself as a kid? Because I find it hard to believe anybody could ever set expectations that you particularly haven't reached yet. That's kind of, I mean, I remember, okay, when I first got to camp, like, you know, my freshman year, Brian asked me like, what, you know what my goals were and I said oh, I want to be first team all big 10 and he just started he just laughed he's like yeah. he's like he's like that's a joke he's like <clears throat> he's like you gotta he's like you gotta change that um 
I don't even know how to say it. So Every, I guess everybody knew. Are, everybody knew. Yeah, the goal. Yeah, the goals I set for myself. Um, I you know I I, I ended up exceeding those because you know I just didn't I just didn't know like. It's I don't tough know how high to set them. Yeah, up. yeah. It's tough as a freshman to come in and for a guy like you who had so much expectation to sit there as a, an eighteen year old and write down, "I want to be an all pro." It's tough to write yeah, something I, like yeah. that. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. You know, writing down, I want to be. You know, an all American. I want to win the out. You know, win the outline. Like right when I got, right when I got on campus, I think those, those were more like, um, you know, this past off season when you know I, I realized you know what I, what I could do and, um, but yeah, coming in, I was just like, I think my I think the first goal was like I want to get on I want to get on field goal because we had Ike and Boone. Yep. Um, so I, I think that was my first goal was just to like, get on the field a little bit. Were you on field goal with me? I yeah, think you probably were. Name. Yeah, I think. I was on the, I, I was on the pole cat. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, were right, you were my right guard? I was. Or was Keegan right and you were left? I was right guard on field goal. But who, I, or I was right tackle on field goal. Because oh, okay. um, I don't know who was. Was it Ferg? Fer, Fergie, yep. It was Fergie. I think it was, I think it was Ferg on field goal. Yeah, yeah. good times. Decent play. Could have scored. The you mentioned the the off season, this past off season. You know, you coming out of last year. Actually, coming out of last year, let's talk about it. Did you have? Did you? Were you the kind of guy who coming out of the twenty seventeen? No, the twenty eighteen football season. You were thinking, okay, or you you knew that after this past season, the nineteen season, that you were going to have a decision. Or that was your goal was you wanted to that you know you wanted to be in a spot where it was going to be it was going to be the situation that you had no not so coming out of the 2018 season you know i just you know i hawk, hawk had left um noah had left um but i didn't i didn't feel like i was in that same that same spot like i was still you know just going in the off season just like any other year you yep. know um and it was really after the hand clean video was when stuff started. Hell yeah. Stuff, stuff started. Going. <laughs> that's when, that's when that kind of kicks. You got <laughs> mad famous off that hand clean video, <laughs> which by the way, I wanted to ask, is that your single most impressive, like personal feat? Like, do you think that's the most impressive thing you've ever done? Period. I, was, I think so. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Be. I mean, you did. I so the, be. the video was four fifty for four. Correct. Yep. Now, for you normal humans, and that includes Drake and I on this. I was very strong at one point in my career, very strong. And 450 for four or five or whatever he did that for, for a squat was a tough day. Like if Doyle would have wrote 450 for whatever yeah. he did for my squat, I would have had to buckle it up and like had a really good day. And Tristan just pulled it. <laughs> well, 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 let's talk about it in this sense is I'm not special. Like, if, if people are listening to this and they want to compare, like, am I close to one of these guys in the podcast? Your guy, the long snapper here is 5'10", weighed about 215, and it was pudgy for four years. So, and then it got pudgier after the, after the, the career was over. I'm about as normal human being as it gets, but compared to normal human beings, I'm probably stronger because I went through the Doyle program than 90% of people. I never saw 450 on the squat sheet one time, ever. What was your max? My max hand clean? I, think uh, I was talking to Clue. He was first. talking oh, to me. Oh. My max oh. squat was 420. So, Tristan, how much, how much more did you weigh than him, Tristan? Were you 320? Yeah. So, it was about 100 pounds. So, it's about 100 pounds. So but he, he took the bar off the squat rack put 30 more pounds on it, held it, held in onto hand, it <laughs> and then brought it to his shoulders four times. So let's, another perspective is the world record clean and jerk. That's from the ground, catching it in a full squat. And then of course, putting it over head is a different story, but the world record is like 635 or something like that. I don't know what was your projected, what was your projected max for hand clean after you hit that Tristan? Five, 500. 500. So I'm willing to bet that if you wanted to become the all-time Olympic 
champion in the clean and jerk, you'd have a decent shot. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I think if you ask Coach Doyle, he would agree. Especially because all of his size is in his lower body. Like Tristan's upper body is big, but what your fucking thighs and your everything, your lower body is not even on the charts. <laughs> <laughs> what? What what were you hitting in high school? What were some of the the lifting numbers? What I mean, the the rest of your teammates in high school had to be looking at you every day like, dude, what the fuck, man? No, they were just as strong as I was. I mean, there's I, no way. It. Tristan, stop it right no now. Way. I mean, I mean, then you I guys was, won I, the national title. <laughs> <laughs> Mount Vernon's the greatest high school, high school football, football team of all time. <laughs> I mean, I was stronger than they were, but like lifting weights wise, like they were pretty. They, I mean, like I didn't bench three fifteen till my senior year, and I did it one. I did one rep. Really? In the, in the spring before I came here. Wow. And all right. So now talk the environment in the weight room, not only during your hand clean, but just overall when it comes to how much you can improve yourself, how much do you attribute that to the environment that is created in that weight room? And Coach Doyle. But, I mean, we've blown Coach Doyle enough on the podcast. I just wanted him to talk about – because, like, on the video that came out, the the, uh, place was just electric factory. But, of course, it was going to be on that. But, like, that's not a one-time deal. Like, that place is always turned like that. I just wanted you to talk about it. I mean, that day – so, I mean, the the day I hit the hang clean was was something else. I mean, I got to the facility that day, and guys were asking me, they're like, you know, how much you going to have? Like, you know, how many reps, you know, is it going to take to break it? Like, like everyone like knew what, like I had to do that day. And I remember uh, people were like up in the windows, you know, and, and yep. guys were, guys were in the earlier lifts were like st- still waiting in there. And like, I was like doing my first two, first two uh, sets. And, and it felt like there wasn't watching. anything on the bar. Right. Yeah. And I remember, Oh my gosh, I, mean, I got like chills. Um, I remember, you know, I put 450 on and uh, I gave my, I was going to give my card to Coach Dill and he just like shook his head. He's like, he's like, no, he's like, I'm just going to watch. And um, so I went over and I, ch- I, you know, I chalked up and I remember uh, putting my belt on. All the guys had lined up, you know, behind me and everything. And uh, they just started, you know, they just started pumping me up and, and clapping. I kind of just blacked out. And I remember putting my yep. strap, strapping up into the bar and, uh, I kind of blacked out. Like I remember hearing much. Um, and I, when I picked the picked the bar off the rack, it it felt light. Like it did not feel like four fifty. I, I want to hang cause... clean right now, man. I want to go right right now. Just because of that environment, how electric it is, and you know, if I were to go in there any other day, you know, without all that, um, it would have felt a lot. It would have felt like four fifty. Um, but I just remember. You know, I did. I knew I needed three to break Scherf's record, and uh, I get three. And I was like, I can get another one. I did four, and uh, I remember I threw it down. I let out. I was like, I was like, uh, I let out a fuck yeah. That shit was uh, primal, dude. That whole yeah. when you slam that ah, that it, shit was right out of. Uh, I don't know, man. That was unbelievable. Yeah, and that just that atmosphere. But that's how it is, you know. Like guys seeing that, like like you you see some you see Imani Jones max out squat, you're like, oh, I can, I want to go, you know, mm-hmm. nail my squat, you know. Um, Strongest pound for pound dude I've ever met. That one right there. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And, and you you mentioned when you w- had walked into the complex, guys were all. I mean, there's a it's almost like a a mist that you walk through, guys, because it's not just you that day. It's it's max Everyone, out yeah. everybody. I mean, there's a couple yeah. people going for records, like. Did the uh, locker room smell like smelling salts? No, I should have got. I should have got some from Brady Ross or something. Some ammonia. <sighs> Somebody in that locker room still had the bottle at forty-five left. Yeah. Uh, the so I mean, it's every single guy, and so you've got. I mean, what you mentioned is everyone knows it's their day. You don't get many mm-hmm. opportunities. Uh, the the pull kitten, as I am going to refer to him, Zach Kluver just entered the program. Last week, he's finally in the okay. facility. Um, so my brother is going to have a chance to potentially, you know, get on the field for the Hawks in, in, the, in the future here. And I told him in the weight room, I was talking about Doyle and how if you want to earn respect, that's the first place you do it is the weight room. And it's going to trickle down from there. And I said, when you go to 
when you want to make an impression, it doesn't matter if you're a long snapper or QB one on those max out days, you got to bring it because you don't mm-hmm. get a whole lot of op- like a, lot, a whole lot of opportunity. There's, there's windows and there's, there's uh, phases that Doyle goes through. There's three max out opportunities a year, maybe two. And so you got to bring it. And that video, like Drake said, I mean, I think it had like, a couple million views on it or something stupid yeah. like that you uh started to hear a little bit after that huh yeah that's when stuff started did you on. did you wait I, I have to imagine because you're the high profile guy when did scouts or like other nfl players they're they're greedy and they want to come after the, the best athletes when did they start contacting you i think the first agent reached out to me in like April and around that video yeah um like I didn't even know like what to do so I just got this call from I think um it was like Florida or something I answered I'm like yeah hello and uh, then he just started talking my ear off and I was like I was like, is this allowed? I was like, am I allowed? I it was like, kind of like, dude, why are you yeah. trying to jeopardize you, me? You thought, you, you immediately bitch. thought, should I even answer? Do, can I hang, should I hang up? Yeah, so that's when, you know, stuff started over the summer. Um was pretty heavy. Um and then this past this past season on like Instagram I had a couple like NFL players like say, Hey, you know, um just reaching out on behalf of like, you know, my agent and stuff and yeah, but you know, that was pretty cool, like get <laughs> just even get a message from some guys. Yeah. Um, um but yeah, it it, it kind of took off after that. Did you ever talk to Coach Ferentz or Coach Doyle about that? Did, I'm sure they probably t- pulled you aside at some point and said, "Hey, here's how you handle this." Yeah, um, we kind of had so in, in camp. There's a meeting. You know, KF KF talked to us about agency. Yeah. Said, you know, there's nothing they can do for you right now. He's like, so and and that, that was, you know, uh, when camp started, I told my, you know I told my mom I was like, "Hey, can you text all the agents that have like gotten a hold of us and just say I'm not I don't want." to talk to any of you guys during the season i'm gonna focus on you know that's smart focus smart on the man the team, so see I, this guy's been way above his years he turned down my lump sum he's fucking telling these agents to piss off during the season this guy's too smart you can't get him <laughs> so it was just you know then i talked you know, i started talking to him after um after the bowl game and then uh and i picked one a couple weeks uh, about two weeks ago did you uh we're, we're definitely going to talk about that and what what you're doing right now Drake mentioned the – when you came in day one, did you ever – at the time, I'm guessing you probably thought it was a joke, but I don't think that you know – that Drake was dead serious when he said he would give you $10,000 like four years ago. Yeah. Uh, did you know he was serious? He didn't know uh, me well he, enough he, to know I was serious. Yeah. I was kind of scared. I was like – like I thought he was trying to like buy me or something like a slave. <laughs> I didn't – you know. <laughs> I was, and I was 100% trying to buy – listen, listen, listen. When I heard that Tristan Wirfs was coming to Iowa, I thought it was fishy because you were an All-American. We don't get that many All-Americans, first of all, but then you were from Mount Vernon. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to – before I make any snap judgments, I'm going to just put my eyes on this guy. And as soon as you walked in the door, I was calling – banks to try and take out personal loans with shit credit because I needed to pay you money for your equity because I'm it was just I had never seen I knew what Brian Ferentz and KF and eventually coach Polisek but especially KF and Brian I knew what they did to talented offensive linemen they just took them over the top and you were the yeah. biggest freak that I'd seen walk in the door in five years and I'd seen some really big freaks and it was just I I was taking a shot, man. Shoot or shoot. <laughs> right. And Tristan, be glad that you didn't do that because your wallet is about to be fat, my boy. So, so going back to the back to the weight room and back to um, camp, and just over two years of starting, practicing against all the the monsters you had to practice against getting so strong in the weight room that you were named the alpha of the entire country. Like where was your confidence at going into this third year, having all of that behind you and just realizing like the dude that's going to line up against you every Saturday doesn't stand a chance. Like, was that in your mind? Is that how you played? Not, uh, not really. I think I should have played more that way. Um, 
but I still felt like I was like, I was like trying to like prove myself or something like that, you know? Um, but even, you know, even though going against AGF and us, uh, Chauncey Golson, you know, those two guys, those two freaks every day, it, it makes those are murderers. Yeah. Those are college football murderers. And yeah. I mean, you had to practice against them every single day. And then you just, I mean, you had so much experience behind your, behind yourself. I just figured you had to play like this dude can't mess with me, you know? I think the second half of the season, I played more like that. Um, For sure. But the first half, I was still kind of like, um, uh, I don't even know, you know, kind of we- not weary, but just, you know, can I, you know, can I, can I live up to the hype pretty much? Hesitant, you know, of, yeah. Of the, of the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's good to an extent. And there's not a lot of guys that have the talent and the actual opportunity to go out and just take over that mindset of like, it, I think Sheriff did it. I Drake, I think you'd agree. Sheriff sure, definitely. I did think it. Sheriff, his 100%. senior season, when he came back, he was going to be a first round pick, and then he mm-hmm. came back, and I, I think he came back, and he was probably the one that I could pick out from our career that just every game. And he that, had to practice against Drewot every single day. Yeah, and, and in his, was a murderer. And so, in his mind, yeah. in, in in Brandon's mind, mm-hmm. he would probably never. Uh, he might tell you he he would in his mind there was no one that was going to beat him, right? And he was going to take. He played like it too. He played right. with this nasty streak that it, he yeah. definitely. Yep. And I think he you, Tristan, so remind. Scary. Yeah, and I think you, Tristan, remind Iowa fans of that similar play style. Definitely. You are a little bit more lighthearted and kiddish than Brandon Sheriff was, and that came out very heavily. I feel like the the crew, Max Allen and Chris Ruth, I think they they highlighted that very well through the video, especially at the bowl game. You run it over to the band. Um, talk about talk about having fun because I think Iowa fans saw no one on the team have more fun than you this year, and people absolutely fell in love with you for that. Yeah, I think you know I'm going to talk about the band a little bit because it's just like. My freshman year, Sean Welsh, um, he would, you know, give the band a little, you know, he he loved it for some reason. He he got the biggest kick out of it. He, Big Daddy Welsh. Uh, yeah, they'd start the band would start waving, and he'd sit there and wait for him to like pick up and pick up, and he'd he'd just start giggling, and he he'd nudge me, he'd be like, "Hey, watch this," and he'd do a little wave, and they'd freak out, and he would just start. <laughs> I love that. Like, I love me some Sean Welsh, man. I was like, is this I the same that. Sean? That, um, so then you know. My sophomore year after Sean was gone, I was like, I was like, maybe I'll maybe I'll keep doing that. And um, you know, they, they the band loved it. They they started they invited me to their Christmas parties. Um <laughs> That's the trumpet amazing. section. The trumpet I went to I went to it. Um I made an appearance and they loved it. It was it was pretty awesome. That's incredible. Uh, but then I was going crazy. you know, last year at the bowl game, I was going nuts, I was screaming at them. Um and they started they started they started chanting um my number and stuff and it was just it was just really cool and, and you know, I got they reached out on Instagram and Facebook messenger just saying that they, they appreciate it. I'm like, you know, I think the band gets overlooked, you know, a little bit like they're there every, every Saturday, you know? Um, and uh, I just felt like um, they're, they're supporting us and doing their thing. It's not, it's not like, you know, we're the only ones there. Um, so I was like, I, I want to show them some love back. And then this year at the bowl game, you know, um, I went and took a picture with them at, at one of the dinners and everything. They were there. Um, and then at the bowl game, you know, I ran over to them after the game just because, you know, they've shown me so much love and support past, you know, two seasons. And I, I just wanted to give that back to them. Um, but, yeah, it's, it, it's pretty cool, you know, having um, – That's some heartwarming shit, man. That is. That is. <laughs> People are going to love that. Do you feel like a – do you feel like a kid? Um, not as much this year as I did last year. I no. still felt like a little kid. Um, feel a little bit more grown. Um, I am 21 now, so I'm technically, yeah, technically you're, grown up. You're a big man now. Um, you're a big man. Yeah. But you I, know, I, 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 I try and keep things lighthearted, you know. And Yeah. How was your first beer? You know, I don't know if I liked it. No? <laughs> I kind of thought the same thing, but <laughs> beer and coffee, they both kind of, you know, they start to – you start to like them more as you get into 24, 25. So, it, it's coming. It's an acquired yeah, taste. Yeah, I'd say – I'd say – I'd say I didn't like it very much. <laughs> it's classic hey since uh since you show a picture of the benton house we got to talk one of your benton roommates who is now 
I'm I'm now the biggest fanboy of his, or like I don't know how I'm supposed to say this, but he's my favorite player now on the Hawkeyes. Shooter, let's talk some shooter. Yeah. How how did that animal go from being a walk on, way undersized, short, stubby, no chance, greasy, to starting? You you got to take us through the progression because you saw it firsthand. One of your best friends, one of your roommates, and now my favorite player because of you know everything. So just you know. Let's let's give him some love. Yeah, I mean, you know, Shooter's my best friend. And we had – there were nights, you know, we'd, we'd be sitting up and talking you know, after a couple of cold ones, you know. Um, you know, we started getting the heart-to-hearts out, you know. Got real deep. But he's a – yeah, so he was – you know, he was a walk-on. And he's like, you know, I, he's like, I don't know how much longer I can keep paying for this, you know. And um, he's, like, if, he's like, I don't want to do this if I'm not going to play, you know. I'm like, oh my God, I 100% understand. I was like, but I see you in practice. I'm like, I see what you can do. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you got to stick with. It. I was like, I'm gonna push you in camp and practice. I was like, I, was like, I know you're gonna push me. Um, and so that's what we were doing. And then he, you know, his opportunity came when, um, when, uh, when Big AJ, when Alaric got hurt. Um, you know, I went over to left, and one of the, uh, Levi Paulson went to right tackle. And shooter came in at guard, and um, I think one of his first plays. He drove a guy like 15 yards downfield and planted him. He started mauling him, people. Dude, Shooter was and, eating. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what he loves to do. <laughs> he was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and he, I mean, he just took off from there. And then, you know, he broke his foot in practice a couple weeks later. And, and they said that, like, yeah, it's going to be like six weeks. Um, it's going to be like six weeks. You're out. And Shooter's like, he told me, he's like, I'm not sitting on six weeks. And I think he was back in like three and a half, four weeks. Wow. Um, and he came back in, um, and I told him the same thing. He's like, he's like, I'm so out of shape. But I was like, I was like, you know, he's like, you gotta keep pushing me and everything. I was like, so I, we, you know, getting to play next to my best friend was, you know, the coolest thing I could have experienced. You know, right. Um, and uh, but his transition from, you know, Jack Black getting here on campus. Jack Black. <laughs> They invited him like halfway through camp because our linemen, our linemen start dropping like flies, and he comes and and just works his way up the depth chart, baby. And and Shooter McGavin out there, out there, I mean, flipping people's faces <laughs> off. Listen, he's eating people's faces off. He so George had the great quote that everybody loves that the best thing in the world is moving somebody to point A to point B against their will, and that's like Shooter's mo. You know, he yeah. he he shouldn't be able to do what he does. You laugh at him when he lines up but then he just eats your face off and takes you from point A to point B over and over again, dude. I'm a shooter super fan. I mean, yeah. shooter was like in a, a pretty elite wrestler in high school, right? Yeah. I think the two, two or three time state place winner. Yeah. So at one point, I think when the, when that shift happened and Alaric was out of the lineup, that whole story came out about how the starting five at that point was like all state champion wrestlers. And I'd like to hear from you. And I, first of all, the whole shooter story, he's coming on the podcast a hundred. Oh yeah. He has Absolutely. to uh, talk about wrestling and, and how much that actually translates and how, and how really being a four sport, I think you were a four sport athlete or maybe I think you were like a 12 sport athlete in high school or something like that. How that all translated to being a, a division one football player. You know, wrestling helps quite a bit and kind of, you know, jump back to shooter real quick. I think shooters, you know, first year and a half here, he was just using what he knew in wrestling to block guys, you know, before he got, you know, before we all got the technique down and everything, he was just, yeah, he was just wrestling guys on the line. Like he could move, you know, with, with leverage and everything. And that's kind of, you know, that's kind of how it translates, you know, leverage, you know, body control, um, you know, balance, um, you get out of, you know, a shooter, we we'll wrestle in the living room and stuff. Like he'll he'll kick my ass. No um, way. Yo, yeah, hundred percent. Shooter's a freak wrestler. Kevin and I wrestled in that living room one time, and it basically ended in both of us just being really tired, and nobody won. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, we uh we got to move the couches and TV out of the way, but um, because it's two large men going. Well, that's like it. that's like two circus bears. You got to pay people to come <laughs> see that one. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Um, but no, it's uh, like. I think wrestling is, is the sport that helps, you know, that translates the most to football or for, you know, at least for all line play, you know, because um, in wrestling, you gotta, 
take another man to his back against his will. Um, and it's nice when you put guys on their back, you know, on the old line. So, oh, yeah. Um, it's nice for everybody in the stadium, dude. The fans love it. Sure. The running backs love it. The coaches love it. <laughs> hey, did you straight up, did you ever put AJ Epines on his back? I don't, I don't know. Maybe yeah. one time. Maybe, maybe one time. How, but, talk about blocking him. What, what was it like to go against AJ in practice every day? You know, it was the it, I mean, it's best like thing for you, right? It's all, yeah, because that's the, I can't ask for anything better, you know. Um, being able to go against, go against a rusher like that in practice four days a week makes Saturdays a hell of a lot easier. Um, and I'm not saying they're easy by any means, but, you know. Easier with, than with how, Vanessa. Yeah, with how big he is, with how fast and strong he is, like he's got all those tools along with the knowledge of being an elite edge rusher, like all the moves, like – that combination is is nuts, and it helped me so much. You know, seeing seeing those moves that he would do, um, and you know, after you know reps of one on ones, you know, we talk about it, and, and if I if I locked him down or something, I'd be like, you know, this is that. I saw this, and if he if he smoked me, then he'd be like, you know, you, you did you did this or you did that. You know, so it's it was nice getting that feedback from each other, and you know, we were just trying to you know make each other the best we could. Hell yeah, that's, that's incredible. Back I, to wrestling. Back yeah. to wrestling. Uh, since Iowa wrestling is number one in the world right now, Tom Brands yeah. after that, uh, after that, it should have been ten zero speech to the media. Oh, I mean, incredible. I couldn't have had a taller tent in my uh, room. Um, and b- being that you were a, a bomb wrestler and a huge wrestling fan, I just kind of want to hear your spiel on Iowa wrestling, the Brands Bros, Spencer Lee. I just want you to fucking talk some wrestling, man. Yeah, you were it. at the meet last week. You took the picture with him. Yep, with I was. Um, and we've been trying to get a – me and him trying to get, been get, uh, get a picture for a long time. Um, but I usually, I usually roll out early or so, roll out early because uh, the traffic's, it, traffic's terrible. You know, it's, it's so – there's so many people that go to it. Um, but no, I love going to the meets. You know, I, I got some of my boys are on, you know, on the team. I, I shout them out every once in a while. Um, and I love the, I love the brands, the, you know, brands twins. Um, They're the best. Uh, I've only talked to, I've only talked to them a couple of times. One was at like the student athlete kickoff at the beginning of the year. Um, he was trying but, to recruit you over. Oh my gosh. I couldn't do that. I trying to get back, trying to get down to 285 right now would be, <laughs> what do you want? Rough. Uh, I'm like 325 right now. Woo! Sheesh. That's heavy. That would be that would be that's tough. A, that's a lot of meat. What did you walk in the door at? Like 318, I think. So you haven't was, moved like, much except for no. that that body composition has probably yeah. seen a shift. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's definitely changed. Um yeah. but no, I love going to the wrestling the Penn State next week. Oh my gosh, it's that's gonna, gonna be, be insane. It's gonna be nuts. Insane. Yeah. Tris, Tristan, did you uh did you have Division one offers for wrestling, or did you? When did you? I, I should do research because podcaster, but did you like get offers for other sports, or once you were locked down for Iowa football, did everybody else just kind of like back off? I didn't have any wrestling offers. I got a lot of a lot of a lot of track stuff. No, no, like official offers, but a lot of track, you know, visits like USC, UCLA, Miami. Okay. Um, but football, like. I got I got two I got Iowa and Iowa State and that was it. That was really it. Yeah, wow. everyone thinks I got like everyone thinks I got a ton of offers and everything, but I just had two. Well, I mean, you were an All American. It would just seem like I mean, obviously these coaches were, com- I mean, completely. I don't know. I don't know what they see. I think you're. I, <laughs> at least it worked out at this point. The, yeah, uh, I, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I think you're happy with where you're at right now. What did you say? Uh, uh, Hundred percent. This past season, ten wins for the Hawks. How important was that to you going into the year? I see you smile as I mention it. Ten wins is a, as both of us know, and Kevin, who is never here, just the worst third host of a podcast that there's ever been. He would he would echo, ten wins in, in the Iowa program is kind of a, a landmark. You know, not many teams oh, yeah. have done it. I think six teams have done it in KF's history. It's a it's a huge thing. Double digit. Did you make that threshold the head coach talks about you for a long time? Correct. Yeah. Going into this season, 
talk about a, a 10 win team at Iowa has great culture. Anyone who mm-hmm. knows anything about Iowa football, culture is key. And a, a 10 win program, no doubt, displays incredible culture. Talk about being your, your part in the leadership of that, because no doubt, as, as one of the face of the program guys, one of the guys who is going to be a, a better guy in the team, you know, coach always says the best, our best guys have to play their best. They have to lead from the front. You, AJ, what was the leadership like in the off season, that culture? What did that look like? And when did you guys know that, okay, we've, we've done this right. And we, we've got a chance to do something pretty special here this season. Um, I think the off season was different because it felt like, um, and it, it definitely translated into the season, but like the closest, closest team I've ever been a part of, um, it was just, uh, nobody being selfish, nobody doing things, you know, just for their, just for their own benefit. Um, it was all, all for the team and stuff. Um, but, and then, and then you saw that, you know, translate into the season where, um, you know, we saw, I saw it in the O-line room first. It was weird. We were all incredibly close. And then it was weird, like the different position groups were close and, and the whole team was, um, so like how people don't realize like how important that is, like not to have a bunch of individuals, you know, yep. acting as individuals on your team. Um, you know, everyone, you know, having the same collective goal, same ideas, you know, trying to get to the same, same place, um, like how important that is. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, you know, we only lost, you know, those three games by a combined total of 14 points, you know, and then, and I think I got asked in the media too, like, what do you think of the win in these close games? And I kind of say, I was like, well, you know, you guys say, you know, we've only uh, lost those three games by 14 points, but how many games we won, you know, by a small margin? I'm like, it goes both ways. I was like, winning, you know, a win's a win. I was like, I'll take it either way, you know. Absolutely. And uh, um, I just, I lost my train of thought. I, I feel like I transitioned that really weird. Um, no, you're good. I, I think really good you brought up a good point though with the, with the 10 wins. It's, it's, you bring up this fine line of Iowa yeah. football and we've talked about it on the, on the podcast before of every single person, 22 people, if you include the specialists, which are considered football mm-hmm. players half the time, sometimes <laughs> 25 starters on the team. And of course you have all the special teams as well. Every guy has to be doing his shit or yeah. Iowa football doesn't work. It's the way the program runs. Alabama can play with three guys that are often, their own head on a single day and they've got eight other athletes on the field that can make up for it. But Iowa football is different and it's such a fine line. I'm so happy you bring that up that it does go both ways because yeah, you won four or three games by, or you, we lost three games by 14 points, but we also, if you look back, we probably won another three games by less than 14 points. I know we did Iowa state one point game. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, Nebraska was a kickoff. Nebraska field goal. I mean, that's two games by four. Yeah, four points. I mean, what? So, it's 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 so fine. And I think when you look back and you see the off season, the program, the culture, that's what wins those close games. And mm-hmm. so, I don't know. It, you look at those three games you lost, and you're like, yeah, it sucks, but it's all part of the bigger picture. You can never look at it in a micro situation like that. Yeah. I had to take a quick drink there. 40. I mean, we could literally talk forever. This is one of the better, this is one of the better interviews we've had. What, uh, let's get into your decision to turn pro big decision, right? Huge, huge decision. Huge. A lot of that that green stuff on the line. There was, was so much anticipation too. Like I know Sheriff's decision when, when he decided to come back was huge. Um, TJ and Noah's decisions were obviously pretty anticipated, but this one, you made us sweat it for a while. Yeah. You and AJ both. And I'll, I want to talk about why the decision to kind of announce it later than a lot of people did. And also just the thought process. Was there ever a time where you were maybe leaning towards playing your last year with the Hawks. When did you start to think about it? When was it, 
what was the, you know, sending your papers into the advisory committee, like all of that. Talk about kind of the process. Um, <clears throat> I'd say it was really like end of the summer when, you know, that kind of thought, you know, came to mind, like, oh, I could leave early. Um, <clears throat> sorry. But, um, you know, I didn't, I really didn't try and think about it much. I mean, it's hard not to, you know, all my buddies are sending me these mock drafts. I mean, they go, look at like, you know, look at this, look at, you know, look at this. Right. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like thanks guys. Thanks um, guys. A lot of pressure. Um, yeah. And like, you need to go here and stuff. I'm like, I'm like, okay, enough of this. But it, it was, you know, I tried to give all my attention to my, you know, to the team and everything. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's hard not to look at it. Um, and people ask, you know, ask you about it all the time. People, you know, ca cashiers at the gas station say, Oh, you got to leave, you know, I'm like, oh, oh, Jesus okay. Christ. Um, does that get annoying? Cause you're one of those guys that probably gets stopped a lot. You, you, you know, like at the wrestling meet and everything you bounce out. I know it's because of traffic, but it's also because if you stick around, you'll be there till 2 AM signing autographs. Like it, does stuff like that ever, did it ever really get on your nerves or, or were you a guy who kind of sat back and you're like, damn, like no one's going to want, my, they're not going to want my autograph forever, you know? So like, it might as well yeah, take advantage of it. Um, I don't say, I don't think it ever gets annoying, but it, um, it can be, it can be a lot sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I try and, I try and, you know, be the best I can about it because I didn't have those opportunities that, you know, when I was a kid to, to go, to get, you know, be able to go to a Hawkeye wrestling meet and see, uh, um, Robert Gallery or Brandon Scherf, you know, a guy like that, right. um, and get, get there. So, you know, and, you know, a little kid coming up to me and asking me for a picture and autograph, like it's pretty, it's pretty special. You know, I feel like, um, I'm, I'm at a point now where, where, you know, I dreamt about being as a kid and, and getting to sign autographs and it's pretty cool, but it, it can, it can be a lot, like a lot sometimes. Like a, the last wrestling meet I went to, um, the one I took a picture with Spencer with like coming, walking up the stairs, I, I think I stopped four or five times or so on the stairs alone. And then when I got to the top, kind of little circle was around me and oh, I was wearing a sweatshirt and a jacket and I just started pouring sweat. I <laughs> trying to take pictures, wiping my forehead and stuff. Just, I was just drenched. But, um, you know, it, I feel like, you know, especially being from Iowa too, um, yeah. I, I think that's, that, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, You're you know, damn near from like, Iowa yeah. city, dude. Yeah. Like really these close. people, yeah. these people know you as their own and they've probably been following you since, however young you were when you started getting talked about and like you're the hometown kid that is doing what all the 10 million before you wanted to do and they're like you know we gotta we gotta attach ourselves to this guy yeah yeah but anyway right. back to the, the the thought process and the decision yeah um i mean you know you guys remember carmen tebby yeah oh uh, so she shout you know, out she, to the goat yeah, yeah drake spent a lot of goat, time with her oh i bet crazy bastard <laughs> um, um but no she helped she helped you know i talked to her me and aj fns i met together with her and you know we most of our days we we're spent talking about the decision um and i think the hardest time was after the bowl game you know when when i think i, I think i was like pushing it off you know um th throughout the season like i was just trying to put it in the back of my mind not think right. about it and then after the bowl game when i it came down to it you know that whole we had like we had like three weeks off about mm -hmm. Um, I was, uh, it was like somebody was playing like ping pong in my head, just back and forth, back for like, I want to leave. I want to stay. I want to leave. I want to stay. Um, and like you, you said, was there a time where you actually thought about, play, you know, staying and playing my senior season? I was like, absolutely. Like, um, my mom always tells me make a pro on cons list of, of like so, tough decisions. I made probably like 25 of things. Um, and just because kept looking um, at like, God damn it. It's still the same thing. I just can't, it, it was the same. It was the same list every time. But I yeah. said, if I wrote it down and got out of my head, I would feel better because like, you know, I think being a, a senior, uh, you know, I was a pretty special thing. Like the number one thing on the list was always um, senior day, like being able to run out to my mom in the middle of the field and, and give her that recognition almost that she deserves, you know, being out in front of 70,000 people in Kinnick stadium. Um, and, you know, because people, people have read about her in, in story, you know, in, in, in yeah. stories that people have wrote, but um, getting her to be, out, you know, to be out there and That's run out to her. Yeah. Um, so that was always number one at the top of my list. And um, I've got good news for you, homie. So you are going to miss that one. Senior day was cool. You know, that, 
but you're going to be able to walk your mom out onto the stage in front of the Bellagio fountains on day one of the NFL draft. So uh, she is missing senior day, but she's not going to miss probably the single coolest NFL draft moment in the history of the NFL draft so far because it's right there. I wonder how deep that Bellagio. water is. I might have to jump. Yeah. Hell jump yeah. Out of, the, out of the water onto the stage. Give it a can opener. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was just, it was such a back and forth decision. And then, um, and then I, uh, um, one morning, it was like two days before I announced it, like I just woke up and I finally felt like I was like uh, clear minded almost, like I knew what I wanted to do. Um, and it was just, you know, it was just like a, like a relief. You know, there felt like there was so much weight on my shoulders and, and finally, you know, making a decision and, and uh, getting out there was nice. And I felt like I, I didn't want to do the wrong thing. You know, that's, that was, was so stressful. Like I, I felt like, yep doing one thing or the other like if it was going to be the wrong decision if i was going to let people down um but when i finally you know made the decision it felt you know i was like yeah, i think i made the right decision and um i feel so much better that's awesome did you we speculated on the podcast while while we were awaiting the announcement was and you said that you met with aj with carmen was did you ever look at each other as you went to the meeting or you just walk in or you maybe you text aj and you you gave him like a hey Maybe we both stay. Maybe maybe we maybe we go one more year. Yeah, we were because me and AJ were thinking about it a lot during the season. Like we, we would catch ourselves like during games. Like was that good enough? And or, like I wonder who saw that. You know. Yep. Um, we had a couple of those moments, and me with Carmen, she's like, she's like, I think you two are thinking of it as you have to leave and you might stay. She's like, why don't you think of it as you're staying and you might leave? And that helped a lot because it kind of just helped, you know get the decision out of mind, you know, out of sight, out of mind for the time being, um, and just be able to focus on, focus on, you know, the season, the task at hand. Um, but so we kind of had that, you know, um, but for a little while, me and Adrian were like, you know, we might make the decision together. Like, you know, we're going to talk. We, we talked like three or four times on how we were feeling. And um, I knew you did. I knew it. Uh, yeah. How could they not? We, I mean, how could they not? Yeah. So. Yeah. That's so, I mean, that's just I think that's a people pretty, of like, the wash up walk-ons. You just don't get that content anywhere else, do you? And, and out of that content, like just listening to it, I think it's like a pretty pertinent opportunity to make the point that like, it's not all fun and games, even if you're the best, no. you know, like you were putting so much external pressure on yourself because you're a team first guy and you're not fucking Antonio Brown. And you're going out there and you don't want to let your best friends down and you don't want to let the school that's given you so much down and everything like that. When truly nobody was ever going to fault you one way or the other. And everybody yeah. is, as you've seen since you announced that you're, you're leaving, everybody's been so positive and happy for you yeah. uh, that like, it sucks that you had to go through all that anxiety uh, when really you should have just been out there fucking enjoying dominating everybody. But yeah, yeah, it's a pretty crazy point to just, to just point out the pressure. Yeah. And that's what, you know, as much as all the people on the podcast, as much as I love you guys, um, they they don't see what goes into um, what what we do on a, on a weekly basis. They just, they just get to see the final product on Saturdays and how, you know, how, uh, mentally draining it can be sometimes um, how much we, pressure that we put on ourselves. Um, yeah. And that's, the performance you know, that's anxiety we, we, is crazy. Yeah. And that's why, you know, we <laughs> meet with a counselor every week, um, yep. but it's a, uh, it's, it, you know, it's real. It's a, uh, it's a stressful thing, you know, I'm playing this game, but you know, we love it. And, um, and now you get to do it for all the paper in the world, my guy. And that <laughs> to really be proud of. Yep. You made it to the point you put in all those thousands and tens of thousands of hours to make it to the point where they pay you to do it, my guy. Yeah. So you, yeah, so you make the decision. And obviously the next step is grab one of those agents. You sign with an agency. And uh, now, you, now you're in it. You're training back in Iowa City. I assume mm-hmm. obviously you're in Iowa City right now with yep. coach Doyle and the staff talk about how training has, it, it just started this last week, week one, right? Yeah. Th- we, yeah. This is the first, this, pa- this past week was the first week. And so there's not a whole lot to talk about. Um, we went through the process, but you'll, you'll get to go through the whole gauntlet of it and you're, you're working for pro day. Talk about your thoughts leading up to that and kind of your goals for, for what's next. Come on, guy. 
Um, I'm excited, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully I get an invitation to the combine. That'd be, you know, it'd be a blast. You will. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that one's a foregone conclusion. So let's talk about the combine. Um, <laughs> because here, you know, listen, Tristan, you're, you're a, you're a record waiting to be broken, literally. So the, like the combine isn't just going to let you slip by. They're not just going to let Tristan Wirfs, who did 450 for four on hang clean, not come. And it's a projected first round draft pick. Right. And, and not come do, you know, the bench and all that. You're going you're gonna to show out because Iowa guys just do well in those situations. And because when you, when you train with Doyle, I mean, your performance just goes to the moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess it's not official yet, but talk about the opportunity to potentially participate in Indy and, and how that'll go down. Um, you know, when I first started thinking about the combine, it made me, um, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, do you guys ever like shop on East Bay? Yeah. A couple times. East Bay. Um, East Bay was the shit back in the day, man. Yeah, Before yeah. there was internet shopping, you got to look at them East Bay magazines. I loved them. But Hell yeah. Um, it was, it was Deion Sanders. He, uh, you know, remember when he said he was going to co- come back to the combine and 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 do this sh- do this shit? But it was he was going to go to the name Leon Sandcastle, and there's like yeah. a T-shirt where he wore like yeah. Afro and the fake mustache. Yeah, like that's the first thing I thought about. I was, I was like, uh, it just popped my head. I never seen it in the magazines and everything. But uh, you know, the opportunity. You know, if I get the opportunity to go to the combine, like it's going to be you know, you know, you watch that on you watch that on TV and stuff, and and guys, um, you know, and I don't want I don't like two mile horn, but I think I'm pretty pretty athletic and I. I I know I can jump high. I've, I've never ran a 40 before, so I'm excited to, um, you know, see what that's going to be. Stretch your hamstrings, guy. Focus on your hamstring flexibility. Because, <laughs> like, yeah. from, from our perspective, even f- me, I wasn't built like a sprinter. I was too big to be a sprinter. You're way too big to be a sprinter. But they're forcing you to sprint. It's the dumbest shit ever. When are you going to sprint, sprint 40 yards? But they still make linemen do it in the combine. Yeah make sure your hamstrings are flexible. Cause I pulled mine and like, there was multiple people that had hamstring issues drew out. So just keep mm-hmm. them hamstrings flexible. We did see a couple weeks ago in the Benton kitchen, you do a freaking get up like a hop up off your back. And that was just another display of your athleticism. Yeah. That was disgusting. Can you confirm you're you're the most athletic pound per pound pound for pound human on earth or <laughs> do we have to wait until the combine know. results? To, to declare that maybe i'm so excited maybe. to see your guys' combine results because just i mean being around you guys seeing what you did every day and shit i mean those those tests are gonna be easy we i will say this yeah. tristan knowing you when you come back and do pro day as well depending on how you do for the combine a lot of times guys won't do uh the, the pro day at the college stuff just because there's nothing else to show but knowing you and kind of talking about your team first mentality and all, you know, how you care about your teammates, pro day is a special day, man. There are, yeah. hey, everyone's there for you, you 15 guys, and you're there with your brothers and everyone just kind of, it's so competitive, but it's against yourself. And it's, it was one of the coolest things that I've ever been through. I, in this closet right here, I still have the the pro day gear that they, they do up for you. So I obviously, I mean, you're going to do a bunch of cooler stuff than that, but that was kind of the end of my career. So I have, that was a special day in my heart. Um, yeah, you're, you're training. You are, I don't know where I want to go from here because I think the story for Tristan has a lot left. Like I said, I don't even know if you're in your prime, my guy. Uh, 21 well, Kluver, we know he's not in his prime guy. I, yeah. We know he, that. I mean, he just turned 21. Yeah. You, you've got some years on you. What are, I guess taking it full circle, you're you're a freshman again. You're going to be a freshman in the NFL. Yeah. Any any change of mindset because I'm sure your NFL coaches will have you do similar stuff. When you walk into a a team's facility and you're you're in an organization in a business like kind of manner now because it, you're getting paid to do it. What are the goals for you at the next level and have you even thought that far? What or are you just trying to impress every day? Um, I don't even know if I've really thought that far yet. I think just um, off the top of my head, you know, just go in there and work, um, keep my notes like Ryan on. I don't want to. I don't want to feel like I like I've gotten a big head or anything. Feel like I've. You never. You never want to think that you've made it. Um, you know, you always got. You always got work to do. 
Um, but I think at the same time, going into that business environment now, um, you kind of got to have a little edge edge about you, you know, because you're going there to take another man's job. Yep. Um, but, Were you a Bears fan was, growing up? I, no, I, was, I never really had a favorite team growing up. I kind of like, I didn't, you know, I didn't really watch a lot of football growing up. My, me and my mom would watch it every once in a while. Um, but I was just, you know, I liked, I liked playing stuff a lot more than watching it. I got you. Um, I, yeah. I just know that the, I like watching the Bears. Play. I like, yeah. The Bears, they just drafted JD a couple years ago. They love him. The Packers love Iowa offensive linemen. I'm just thinking, you know, a couple places near home. Mama doesn't yeah. have to travel too far. And uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple teams right here that would like to have you play offensive the line before. Oh, yeah. Is there anything else, Drake or Tristan, that you think people would hate us or be real upset with if we didn't talk about before Tristan leaves? We're going to have you back on because oh, have to. absolutely because we want to talk about you know probably about the same time next year talk about your your rookie season I mean as long as this podcast is alive you're welcome to come on and talk but uh anything else I'm trying I mean we hit the we hit the hang clean video we hit the you know you having fun with the band all the stuff that kind of came out I don't know what else there is anything you want to tell the people Tristan um you know, I would just say to, to Hawkeye Nation out there, I love you guys. Um, it's, it, it was an honor to, you know, to play in front of you guys and, and the amount of love and support you showed, you know, this hometown kid um, was, it was incredible. So, you know, I love you guys. That's all there is. Can Man. we get a Hawk? Can we get a Hawks by a million? Hawks by a million, baby. Let's go. go. Let's go. Tristan, thanks for joining us for Drake and me and Kevin, wherever the hell he is this time. That's it for the Wash Up Walk-Ons, episode 84, with your guy, the future NFL Pro Bowler, Tristan Wirfs. I'll call it here right now. Uh, let's go. First one. Let's go. Everybody have a great day. See you later.